Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor and we're getting ready to paint this floral cow. I'm so excited about it. I am in love with all of these new um, farmhouse like animals that we put in the shop last week. We had a llama, a cow, a pig, and what else? A horse. And so if you need some farmhouse animals, we can hook you up. This little cow is the one we're gonna be painting tonight. It's gonna to be a really soft brown cow with black eyes and like three or four different colors of flowers. You can find it as a template in my shop for $5 if you wanna cut your own shape. Or as a blank like this one, this is the 20 inch blank, so it's not as tall as some uh, door hangers, but that's because her ears are 20 inches wide. And so um, she's, um, a little bit shorter than your usual door hanger, but she's got a nice ear spread there. All right, so let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna to try to push my laptop up here out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna, I believe I'm gonna start with the white parts of her face here and here, and then we're gonna do some shading. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with just your basic white, nothing special about it, just white. Um, I'm not painting the entire thing white this time. Actually, I need a slightly bigger brush than that. Let's see, that looks like a good size, about a one inch wide flat tip brush. And then um, we're just, whoops, I already dripped the paint. We're just gonna put this down the middle of the cow's face. I'm not worried too much about staying inside the lines because the brown and black that go on the nose and then on the rest of the face will cover where I get outside the lines. So we're just gonna slap it on here. How's everybody doing? Are you guys um, staying home or are you having to go to work? I spent most of my day today packaging boxes to ship out. You guys have been placing orders for blanks like crazy. I guess because you're stuck at home and you want to paint. So we have done, we've probably shipped 70 orders today. It's been a busy day. And then let's paint inside the ears white. And then we're going to do some shading. I'm not a super confident shader. So this will be sort of like a little trial and error with you guys. Um, I do believe that it works best when your paint is stays wet. So we're going to try to work quickly. I'm not going to be a perfectionist about this. So I'm going to use, I'm using all deco art Americana matte acrylics. This one is oyster beige. It's a slightly darker shade of, it's kind of off white. It's got a slight bit of tan to it. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of shading down into the nose with a little bit of the white. Actually, I think it needs a little bit more white. It's let me add a second coat of white here and we'll shade on top of the second coat. My white first coat wasn't thick enough. All right, now I'm dipping in a little bit more of that oyster beige and I'm just gonna try to shade in. I'm just kind of putting it on the corner of my brush and I'm just gonna shade it into some of the areas of the nose. And I'm not super confident doing this, so I'm just kind of, if I get too much, then I'm going back over it with some white but I'm gonna do it around the edge of the nose and then try to leave the middle part of the nose white, like what just white. Can you guys see the difference there? So it's pretty white down the middle and then it's got a little bit of that tan shaded in here and, he and down here and all along the ridge of the nose. It's very subtle. Let me get some more of the plain white and go up through the middle here and then just kind of feather it in with what I've already done. Okay, so now I'm gonna get, actually I'm gonna do a little bit of this tan on the bottom inside part of the ear, and then I'm gonna do some pink also. I think this one needs shaking. <laughs> this one's called blush pink. And I don't need very much of it. I'm just gonna get the corner of my brush in just a tiny bit of it, not very much at all. And then we're going to shade this in. All right, that was too much. Let me show you. Too much pink. So we're going to take some white and just go right back over the top of it and keep feathering back and forth to thin it out. And it softens it up a lot. And then I want to leave the center part of the ear a little bit more white with a little bit of that tan mixed in. Okay, let me see, show you how I should softened it up. So I've got just a little bit of pink and white and tan. That way it's not just flat white. Okay, let's do the brown part. 
This is dark chocolate, which is way too dark for what I'm wanting, but I don't have the color brown that I want. So we're going to make it or mix it. Um, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this burlap color. My paints are making lovely sounds. We're going to just kind of mix that together and make a lighter shade of brown. I wanted more of like a milk chocolate brown, and this is more of a dark chocolate. <laughs> we want a milk chocolate cow. Okay, let's try this color. So we're just going to give this a good base coat of brown. And then we will do a little bit of shading on it as well. The shading is not not absolutely necessary to have a cute door hanger. It's just kind of like a way of challenging yourself and leveling it up a little bit. So you wouldn't have to do the shading to have a cute door hanger if you don't want to. But um, it's just a way of like making yourself try something new, and challenging yourself a little bit. And since it's not something I'm super comfortable doing, um, occasionally I will try to challenge myself and make myself do it. And I'm usually pretty pleased with it. But that it requires a little bit of patience because I like to sometimes just paint it and be done and like enjoy the finished project. And shading requires patience. You have to work with it and try things and sometimes it's not gonna work like you want it to. And so it's just a slower way of painting. I'm gonna have to get a different brush for that part. All right, I'm getting in some of the tighter spots with the brown now. Let me um, dry this so we can do a second coat of brown. Oh, where did my hair dryer go? I was vacuuming in here the other day and had to move it. So I'm going to have to reach over and get it. Uh, yes, LaToya, these are laser cut blanks we sell in my shop. Um, you can get them etched with the design in the surface. That's what this cow is. That's why, whoops, my paper towels are falling off the rack here. That's why this cow has the flowers already drawn out up here. The face is already drawn out. Um, if you were to get it not etched, this is what it would look like. And so it's up to you. You can get it etched or not etched. How much does this blank cut cost? Um, it changes depending on the size. So this is the 20 inch size. That's the largest that we offer. And it would be with the etching $24. Um, you can also get it in 12 inch, six or eight inch. And so they vary in price depending on the size. I'm just gonna put a second coat of brown and then we'll go back and add some shading. Whoops, there was a piece of dried paint in there. I also encourage you guys, if you um, have some tools to practice cutting your own door hangers, it's gonna save you a ton of money. And you can get the templates from us for just five dollars um, if you catch them the weekend that they release because every friday we release five new designs you can get them half price um, and then of course if you're really excited about our templates you can join the template club and get all of the new designs that we release every month for one low cost of thirty dollars which would be 20 to 25 templates for just 30 bucks and um, you would get them all on the first, like your payment would process on the first of the month and then you would get them after your payment process is usually on the, the second of the month. And so if you want to learn more about that, you can go to southernadornmentsdecor.com forward slash template dash club. Okay, so we've got that done. I'm going to switch to an angle brush to do some of the shading on this cow. Um, Let's see, I wanna go with a little bit lighter in the middle here. Let me get some brown and some of the, I'm also getting some of this oyster beige and going up closer to the nose. And then I'm just taking the darker brown and smudging it out a little bit. So bear with me, if I get quiet, it's because I'm concentrating. Do the same thing on this side. I'm running out of the darker brown. I just smudge it out a little bit. Okay. Let me see if you can see kind of what I've done so far. So 
right up next to the nose, we've gone in with a lighter shade and um, kind of smudged it out with the darker brown. All right, now I'm getting the original color. You remember I lightened this color to start with? I'm taking the dark original color now and I'm gonna shade that in around the outside of the face. So we're, we're kind of giving this cow like the highlighting and contouring effect that we try to do with our makeup a lot by giving her darker shade around her cheek, like behind her cheekbones and all of that to make her appear thinner. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm just trying to feather that in some places. Sometimes when you feather it in, it looks more like fur. I think I need a little bit more of this. And then I'm also going to do this kind of under the ears. darker shadow there. It's not showing up quite as bold as I would like, so I may darken it up with a little bit of black. I'm going to put a drop of it in the brown. Come on. There we go. Just one drop. Whoops, because black can go a, lot, a long way. Okay. There we go. Now we're getting a nice dark brown shadow. It's always good to have a paper towel on hand too when you're shading and a little bit of water because you can kind of lighten the paint up with that. So get a little bit of water and lighten that up now because that's pretty bold right through there. And then we'll do the same thing kind of around the eyes a little bit. I'm just trying to feather it in just a little bit. It's kind of challenging. But how will you ever grow as a painter if you don't challenge yourself, right? It's usually, and, and if you really want to challenge yourself, do it on Facebook Live in front of people so that um, it makes you a little nervous to, you know, whether it's going to turn out good or not. Let me get a little bit of this and go around the bottom of the mouth because it would be darker down here. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far, guys. I'm kind of pleased with it so far. I'm going to feather in a little bit more of this lighter brown. It got a little dark right there. I'm having to lean this way because like the way my light is hitting it, I can't see the actual color I'm getting. Okay, I need to do the darker shade up under this ear too. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All right, we're gonna switch colors now and do just a little bit of this oyster beige, which was the color we shaded in on top of here, around the eyes because um, we're gonna do black on the eyes, but this color kind of peeks out around the black. So I'm going on top of and over my lines just a little bit so that when I paint the eyes black, you'll still see just a little bit of this color peeking out. You'll know what I mean in a minute if you're not understanding. Just go just slightly outside the lines. Okay, let's dry that. Actually, before I dry it, let me get my damp brush and just kind of soften it just a little bit. It's almost like blurring the lines, smudging them a little bit. Whoops, got too far outside the lines. Y'all are seeing me do something different tonight. Let me get this one with a little bit of water. Ah! That was not what I intended to do. 
Let me get a damp brush and clean it up while it's still kind of soft. There we go. I was trying to just smudge this just a little bit, kind of like blurring it. There we go. Before it dries completely, take a little bit of water to it. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. See what I did? I kind of made it look just slightly opaque and blurred it just a little bit around the eyes. So now I can go back and there we go. I'm not too worried about it because when I go back and add like the black lines and things that I define it with later, you won't be able to tell all of that. All right, let's get some regular just black and do the eyes. So now I actually am staying inside the lines for the eyes. And you can see that some of that tan color is peeking out. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint right over that little spot in the eye that's supposed to be white. And I'll just paint the white on top of the black. That's easier than trying to paint around that little circle and make it look good. Okay, see how that color was peeking out from behind the black? That was what I was going for. Oops, I got out of the lines. Hang on. We got baby wipes for that. When in doubt, grab a baby wipe and correct what you just did. I just got outside the lines and I got on top of that tan color that I wanted to have exposed. So while it's still wet, I'm just gonna erase it. There we go. It's not a big deal. Okay. Let me clean this line up a little bit. There we go. still see that little dot etched in the surface of the eye so I'm just gonna paint that white just dab it on with my little filbert tip brush there we go okay see how we did the tan around the eyes and we made it slightly fuzzy and then we did the black and then we did the white so that's how the eyes are done it does make her face pop doesn't it Yvette and now we got to paint the nose. Okay, let's do her nose. I'm going to get my handy dandy um, angle brush here and some black. And then we're going to shade in and kind of shade the nose too. So we're going to paint it black first. And then shade on top of the black. I like using angle tip brushes for shading. I don't use them for much else. Like I'm not enjoying using it right now to, to base coat this nose, but because I'm fixing to use it for the shading, I just decided to use it for the whole thing. Um, but if you need some angle brushes, I have a whole set of 12 of them in my shop. So you would have all the sizes that you could possibly ever need. Um, they make it great for shading because you can kind of work at an angle with them. That's why they're called an angle brush. All right, so now that we have that black, I'm gonna dip just the corner of my brush in some white and pretend like I know what I'm doing here. And then we're going to shade the bottom side of the mouth. I've got it on the very longest tip of my angle brush. I'm just going to sweep it back and forth. Oh, I almost didn't get enough, so let's get some more. And this is while the black paint is still wet. And then we'll take a little bit, do the same thing on the inside of the nostrils. I'm going to try not to go back and forth on the inside of the nostrils. I'm going to try to just keep it all going one direction. It's kind of challenging though. There we go. And then um, do a little bit more like on the top of the nose here. And I'm thinking about it like I'm pulling that white paint through the black to shade it. 
And while I'm doing it, I'm kind of pushing the brush into the black to blend them. And it just takes a little bit of practice. Like even now I'm kind of uncomfortable doing it, but if I keep working at it, I can usually get it to look like I want it to. And if your brush feels like it's dragging too much, just get a little bit of water on it, dab it off on your paper towel, and then go again. Okay, so let me show you my nose up close here. <laughs> my cow's nose. So we've got shading all around the outside of the nose and then on the inside of the nostrils. So our cow's face is pretty much done. I'm really excited about how she turned out. I don't know if I'm ever going to let this one go. I love her so much. Let me do a second little coat to fix this spot on the ear too. Let's do the flowers. So I'm going to rotate her around. The, so I don't mess anything up on the face while I'm working on the flowers. So the colors I'm going to use on my flowers are melon, sunshine yellow. This is a deco art patio paint. I don't know why I have a patio paint, but that's what we're using. And lavender. And I may lighten up the lavender and the melon a little bit to create a more pastel shade. And then we're going to use Hauser light green and Hauser medium green on the leaves. So let me start by squirting all of these colors into my egg carton. Just about a dime size amount of each one. I always shake them before you open them. They like to separate a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna lighten the purple and the, and the melon just a little bit with a little bit of white. Actually, I'm gonna do the yellow the same thing. I want them to be a little bit more pastel than these are. And then I'm gonna mix with the bottom side of my paintbrush. That was not quite enough, hang on. A little bit more for the purple. Okay, and I got a mess here. <sighs> hang on. It's like dripping off the edge of my paint bottle. And that drives me bananas, cause then it goops up the lid. All right, now that we've got our flower colors all mixed, um, let's get, we could just use this little filbert tip brush, I guess, maybe. I don't know, let's see how it looks. And we're gonna get our pink. Yeah, that's gonna take too long. Let me get a bigger brush. Here's a bigger size filbert. The reason I'm using the filbert is I like that I can make the edges of the petals with the shapes of the filbert brushes. It just makes a smoother edge and then I can fill in the middles quickly. We had pink, purple, yellow. Okay, we've got, oh, I knew I was missing something. I had one more color set out over here for the flowers. Um, so this other color is called Bahama Blue. I've got to lighten it also. Let's add a little bit of white to it also. That way we're creating nice pastel colors. I don't normally work with pastels. I usually work with really bright colors, but for this cow, I wanted nice pastel flowers. That way her face was the thing you focused on when you looked at it. Okay, here we go. What was I doing? <laughs> I was painting my flowers. So we had four colors for the flowers. This is the melon color with white added. And let's see how many flowers we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, if you count that one underneath. So if I leave four and I dab on the others. Okay, I'm gonna designate those as my pink flowers and go ahead and paint them pink. So I just tried to look and do one and then count three over and then do another one and then count three over and so on. You could paint them one by one, but this kind of makes it go faster so that you're base coating all of them at the same time. All right, let's get our purple. And we'll do a purple flower here, a purple flower here, and then here. Okay. 
So this is the lavender paint color lightened up with white. If you like the cow, we also have a llama with a flower crown, a chicken, um, a horse, and a pig. <laughs> and the pig is the cutest little thing. I almost painted the pig, but I love cows more, so I had to paint the cow. All right, that purple may not require a second coat like the pink did. All right, this is the Bahama blue, lightened up with some white. We'll do this one blue and let's see this one i may have messed up here this one and then those three will be yellow maybe not maybe i didn't mess it up We tie-dyed shirts on Friday. Um, we painted gnomes a couple of weeks ago. I went to a ceramic store here locally and got some more ceramics to paint with the kids. So we're gonna be doing that again sometime soon. Today, the kids played outside a lot while I did shipping. They got out the um, water hose and put it on top of the trampoline and had a big old time. <laughs> Kathy, uh, was it Kathy or some, somebody said that I got them back into crafting. I love to hear that because sometimes we kind of get out of crafting because life gets in the way and we get busy and we forget how much we loved it and how therapeutic it was and how much we enjoyed it. Um, and some of it, some of you guys may not even tried it before and you don't even know that it's something you could really enjoy. Um, when I was a um, stay-at-home mama, still am technically, but I'm a kind of a work-at-home mama now, um, when my husband was deployed to Afghanistan, I discovered that I loved like paper crafting and scrapbooking and that eventually evolved into this. And so if you're like that and you, um, you know, need a little bit of something that's just yours, something that is your hobby, you know, maybe your husband loves video games like mine and you need something that you can do that's just your own that you can kind of, you know, be your escape, maybe you should try painting. It might just be the thing that lights you up and you don't even know it's inside of you. Many of you guys will comment and say, you know, you've got me thinking that I can almost do this. Like you've got me believing I, I might be able to do this. Well, you can. I believe in you. You should believe in yourself. Anybody could learn to do this. You don't have to be born with some kind of talent. I certainly wasn't born with this talent inside of me. It's something that I taught myself to do. And so if I can do it, you can do it. Yes, it is very relaxing. I think I saw Kayla say that she had ordered one of these cows and this one will be her first door hanger. So I'm excited to see how it turns out, Kayla. I hope you send us pictures or post them in the free group for me to see. I would love to see it. By the way, if you're not a member of our free door hanger painting tips group, you should go and look it up on Facebook and join it. There's um, roughly 10,000 people in that group and they all share like door hanger painting and crafts and it's just a really cool place to be. Well, Joy, my Painters Clubhouse membership is a paid group where you can learn to paint door hangers. It just closed its doors a couple of weeks ago, but if you want to go and get on the wait list for it or at least get started with the beginner's course, you can go to southernadornmentsdecor.com and learn more about it. Um, we don't plan to open the Painters Clubhouse again until the fall, possibly in August. Um, let me look at the calendar. Oh, I don't even have August up on my calendar. But if you want to circle the date, I can look it up for you. Let me look at the calendar on my computer here. 25th will be the next time Painters Clubhouse opens back up, August 25th. So um, if you're a part of that beginner's course or you're on our wait list, you'll be the first to find out if we decide to open it you know, quietly to people on the wait list or open it early, um, we'll send you a little message because sometimes we open it in between the public openings just to the people who've been waiting patiently on the wait list. And so if you're on that wait list, you'll be one of the first to find out. Okay, I've squirted out this 
Hauser medium green and Hauser light green. And we're going to do the flowers in two different colors just for fun. We're going to break it up and do some of them dark green and some of them lighter green. And I'm using my angle tip brush for this. Just because I had it handy here. Let's see, we'll do this one dark green. And then we'll do the others light green. Let me dry them because they're going to need a second coat. That didn't take long. <laughs> Paint dried really quickly. But if you enjoy this, you would absolutely love that paid group, the Painters Clubhouse because um, you get even more tips and like practical things you can learn. Like Monday, we had a whole lesson from Jessica Carpenter of Heaven's Country Door on hand lettering. And so, um, you know, you wouldn't just learn how to paint one door hanger. You would learn tips and things that you could use on any project that you're working on. And you would get inspiration from the group. Um, and you get to be a part of an amazing community. This Thursday night, we're gonna be doing a Zoom paint party with the group, and we get together on Zoom, and we chat, and we paint together, and it's kinda of like a, just a fun craft night together, where we, you know, we don't have to sit here and paint by ourselves. We can paint with our friends. It's a great way to get to know other people and to really feel like you're a part of the group. go back over these with a second coat. This is never ending. You see one spot to touch up and then you're like, oh, there's 10 more spots I want to touch up. And then you got to stop. Okay. We're not going for perfection. All right. So now we need to add some details to the flowers because they're just kind of plain right now. But isn't she lovely so far? <laughs> I just love her. Okay, so we're going to add some details to our flowers. So I'm going to get a small round tip brush. And um, we're going to take, let's try to just take the original paint colors because we mixed all of these colors with white. So let me see if this is dark enough. Nope, not quite. All right, so this is running out of spots. Let me use this. And I'm going to put just a little bit of purple. A little bit of melon. We're going to do just a tiny bit of each color. Uh, may not do a tiny bit of the yellow because that's not going to show up very well. I'll do something different on it. And then we're going to mix a slightly darker shade of purple. Here's one called grape juice. I may not even need to mix this. So I'm, I may have like completely wasted my time putting that down there. Yes, I did. Okay. So I'm just going to use this grape juice color because it's dark enough on its own. And it's a darker purple. And I'm just going to use it to add some little squiggles inside my flowers with my round tip brush. Just kind of wiggle your brush. Make little seagull shapes. <laughs> little wiggles all around your flowers. Okay. And then rinse. And then I need a darker turquoise color, which I may actually have to mix this one because this is a very bold turquoise. So I'm gonna do like half and half the turquoise and then the Bahama blue to create an in-between color. Cause that one, I, I'm, I'm running out of some of my paint colors. So we're having to get creative here. And that's still not dark enough. So maybe I, we're experimenting. This is called uh, bluegrass green. And I'm just using it inside the flower to kind of add some dimension to my flowers. Um, I think this color will work nicely with the coral. This is called watermelon slice. Okay, and then the yellow we're going to use. Where is the color? Here it is. It's underneath. Uh, this is called marigold. It's kind of a golden yellow. I think it'll just make a nice contrast on this bright, bright yellow for a flower detail. 
So just wiggle that brush around there. The flowers are not nearly as hard as you think. And doing this little technique right here is so easy. Like if I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not hard. Get your tiny round tip brush and just do these little wiggly seagull shapes. See what I mean by a seagull? That looks like a seagull you would draw as a kid. So just do little seagulls all the way around the flowers. A little bit of black in this Hauser medium green so that I can add some details to my leaves. And do like a, a bottom shadow on the leaves and then like a little stroke through the middle to make it look like it's got something going through it. And then I'm gonna mix just a little bit of that with the lighter green. And do the same thing. It's just details. Okay, so now we're ready to add our black and white accents. Okay, let's get our white and our tiny round tip brush. And then we're just going to add the same little seagull shapes inside of our flowers to add some accents. So now we've got our Posca paint pen. This is the middle size, the medium size, and we're just gonna add some little details. Honey, okay, let me outline the nose. Okay, so we're gonna do the black also kind of down the outside of the cheekbones to give her a nice slimming look. Okay, so let me show you so far what I've done. I put the lines down the front of the nose and then around the outside and around the ears. And then we'll go around the outside of the ears as well. And I did not stay on the line with that, so we're not going for perfection. Okay, that's pretty much dry, so now I'm going to take my black and do some cute little accents in my flowers. That may seem kind of counterintuitive, but it definitely makes for brighter colors in your flowers and makes everything pop. If it makes you nervous, start with the smaller size Posca paint pen for this, and you can graduate to the medium size like I'm using now after you get more comfortable doing it. They may look a little crazy up close, but you're going for the overall look from, you know, from standing a couple feet back. And it works best if your paint is nice and dry. Mine is semi-dry. <laughs> okay. Lots of details in our flowers and I've got paint all over the edge of my paint pen here. Okay, I think we are finished with her now that I'm looking at the picture. I think I've done everything I wanted to do to her. So let me give you a close-up of the flowers. And then this is the overall look that you're going for from standing back here. So isn't she lovely? I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and send me pictures of your cows after you get them painted or put them over in our free group called Door Hanger Painting Tips. Um, it's right here and I'm going to use some jute string. So do I have scissors over here? Yes, I do. Okay, so you need jute string. You can get this at Walmart or wherever and a staple gun. Notice I have a little piece of cardboard under there with some tape holding it on. That is to ensure that my staples don't go through my door hanger because back in the day, before I started laser cutting all of my door hangers, um, I used to have revolution plywood and that stuff is a little thinner than this. And so it can be difficult sometimes to keep your staples from going all the way through. So let me make sure this is dry. Yes. Okay. Flip it over. Actually, the best thing to do is to hold it up like this and decide how it will hang level. Now, this one's pretty easy to figure out because it's a symmetrical shape. But if it's an odd shape, hold it up and figure out how it will hang level. And then wherever your fingers are is where you're going to staple your string. And then I tied a knot 
and each end of the string. And then you're just going to staple right below the knot. Now this is, this is the MDF, so it's not gonna go through the MDF because it's harder. And there you go, you have your string on there. So that's how you attach it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tonight and um, you can find everything you need over in my shop at shopdoorhangers.com. All right, I've gotta go now. I thank you guys for joining me tonight. Don't forget to sprinkle the love. Bye y'all.